Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Uh, many of you know that former president lungu the sixth president he he prefers that we call him that and i and i agree with him i love the fact that we can say the sixth president the sixth president of this great republic many of you know that he made the news yesterday and i found it interesting D didn't you find it curious that president lungu exiting the magistrate's court and then it's him singing a line from a song trended more than the presentation of the budget isn't that just amazing i mean what kind of people are we what kind of world are we living in where a line from a song spoken by the former head of state trends on social media and yet there's not a squeak there's not a peak about the presentation of the budget there's not a, a, a squeak about the fact that the the cdf has been bumped up by several millions of kwacha hitting the 30 million plus ceiling nobody's talking about that you know why as i often share with you people pay attention to things that are interesting not things that are important that's the beast that's the the natural beast of the internet leviathan so don't be shocked don't be dismayed don't be taken aback whenever you look at the internet and see things that are trending and and all of a sudden when you see that the former president the sixth president utters a line from a, a slap d song it's everywhere on the internet now i, I want to take a moment to look at that briefly and i think i think it's it's important that we sort of examine what happened yesterday the the intonation the undercurrent the implication the insinuation the hinting of what that song meant when uh, sixth president i was going to say former president sixth president lungu uttered that line let's look at the song and let's look at the at what he said now for those of you that don't know what i'm talking about let me bring you guys up to speed okay and here's the thing uh, yesterday when former president lungu sixth president lungu was escorting his wife mama esther lungu she went to court she's been charged with uh, theft of motor vehicle she's been charged with uh, money laundering and a few other things and he escorted her there and as he was leaving he was he had an entourage with him and among among the people that were with him mumbi Pier was there uh, rafael hijack nakachinda was there with his ridiculous binoculars for goodness sake drives me nuts when i see him with those things he was there a few other people were there and while he was walking away uh, walking out of the courthouse Bamumbi Piri was trying to coax him trying to convince him to withdraw his letter that he wrote to the secretary of the cabinet at the time it was mr simon nitty where he indicated and very clearly stated that he would no longer participate in active politics and with that letter his presidential benefits began to kick in okay he gets 80 percent of the, the salary of the current president all of his security detail is taken care of transportation medicals housing everything is taken care of by the government which is that's the way it's supposed to be because that's how we roll as zambians we take care of our former heads of state any house of his choosing he gets to uh, the government gets to build him a house the the house that he's currently living in now the information i have and of course you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the information I have is that that house uh, costs about $6,000 a month to live in that house. And guess who fits the bill? And rightly so, the government fits the bill because he is the former president and he deserves those perks. In addition to that, you know, he gets to travel anywhere in the world. Any once a year, he gets to go on vacation, holiday, 
any des destination in the world. He just he just takes the globe. I got a globe here. He just takes the globe. He just looks at a globe and says, you know what? Okay, this year, let's go to the Maldives. Boom, the government pays for it every year. Next year, he can say, oh, let's go to, uh, boom, Antarctica. The government pays for it. That's how we roll. So w the moment Sixth President Lungu wrote that letter, informed the secretary to the cabinet at the time, Simon Mitty, all of these beautiful perks began to kick in. Now, when I'm taking you now back to the courthouse, as he was leaving, and as Mamumbi Piri was saying all of the things that she was saying, she sounded un unhinged to me. She just, she was completely beside herself. She was talking about stuff that just didn't make any sense. She was saying things like, go and withdraw so that you start suffering with us. And I said it yesterday and I'll say it again. Former president, six president Lungu is not suffering. I can tell you that. Six president Lungu is riding high on the saddle. He's having a great time, you know, as a, as a, as a former president, he's getting those perks. So for Bamumbi Piri to suggest or to imply that no you go to cabinet withdraw that thing so that you come and suffer with us that is being disingenuous it's being it's being ridiculous to be to be frank and honest with you anyway so as they were walking out and this is the point i want to make six president lungu looks at mumbi piri and he quotes a famous song sung by slap d and somebody else named is it four and five four and a five is that a person four and a five that's the first time i've ever heard of that you know, I've never heard of four and a five. Well, there's a famous song called Nari Tumpaine. And the literal translation of this song, and of course, this is my, my watered down translation of the song. And then there's, there's I'm, I'm being very deliberate about this. There's a reason why I've watered down the translation because I'm referring to the former head of state. I do not want to come across as just disrespectful to the former head of state. So I have to give you a watered down version of the translation of this line. Six President Lungo looked at Mumbi Piri and says, which is a line from this famous song. And the translation is, I am silly. Okay. Now, the first line of that song. The very first line of the song says, meaning, I do not fear man. Now, you have to look at the undertone, the undercurrent of the implication of this song. And for you to understand that, you must understand that, um, and I'm going to give you this as an example. Back in the uh, 90s, for those of you that remember, there was this big east coast west coast battle you know snoop dogg notorious big tupac shakur and that whole gang you know there was this perceived which really this 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 conflict between the, the 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 west and the east the east coast and the west coast west coast being you know the state of california and then east coast being new york in the rap industry in the gangster rap industry there was this conflict that was fueled but in those days, we didn't have social media. We used to have, it was called the press. It was just referred to as the press. For those of you that don't remember, there was a time there was no social media. You know, this is 1989, 90, 91, 92, those, those years there. We didn't have social media. So we used to refer to, to, that, to that medium as the press. The conflict between the East Coast and the West Coast was mainly fueled by the press. And gangsters used to communicate through rap, through song. They would send a message through song. Now, to the consumers, it was entertainment. You know, to the people that would go by, in those days we had CDs. You guys don't even know what CDs are. You know, in those days we used to have what they were compact discs, a little silver disc that you would put in a machine and press play and music comes out. Now you kids stream. They call it streaming now. <laughs> when i was a kid streaming meant you know a, a body of water <laughs> anyway so my point is gangsters used to communicate through rap they would send subliminal messages do you know what a subliminal message is 
Tell me in the comments. Somebody please tell me in the comments. What is a subliminal message? When you, when you, when Tupac Shakur would want to send a subliminal message to, to Biggie, to the notorious B.I.G., he would do it through rap. You and I, as a consumer, may not be privy to certain elements in the song that are specifically targeted at Biggie. But Tupac Shakur knew exactly what he was saying. To you and I, it was just rap music, you know. But to them, it was a subliminal message. They would be sending a message, an undercurrent, an undertone. Tell me in the comments. Somebody tell me. What is a subliminal message? There are so many of you very sharp chaps. Can you say it in the comments so that I highlight you? Eh? Subliminal message. A subliminal message is a message that is not very, it's not overt. It's, it's very subtle. It's camouflaged. But the person that is attuned know, knows exactly what you're saying. So my point is this. I think, to some degree, to some degree, I think that Six President Lungu was sending a subliminal message to the current administration. When, when you, especially when you look at the song in its context, when you look at the very first three words in this song, the first three words in this song are, Ineshitina Muntuyo. I don't fear anyone. And this is the narrative that Abena Rafael Nagachinda, Boman, Abena Given, this is the narrative they want to fuel. They want to whisper in Six President Lungu's ears. Don't fear him. That narrative is very dangerous, especially given the fact that Six President Lungu is a former head of state. He's done his time. He's been sworn in twice, served twice. But when you've got this special interest group that, that, that surrounds him and they begin to whisper in his ears, don't fear him. And so when, when Six President Lungu is out of the line yesterday, you and I can interpret that in any number of ways. Any number of ways. And, and which brings me now to the issue of legacy. Okay? This issue here. What former President Lungu needs to focus on is this. Legacy. Let me take you back in history, for those of you that do not know. Have you ever heard of the FJT Institute? Some of you don't even know what that is. Let me, let me break it down for you. When the second president of this republic, President, late President Chiruba, after having served two terms, he wanted to build a democratic institute. He called it the FJT Democratic Institute. Do you know where it was located? Tell me in the uh, comments below. Guys, you have to be quick, okay? You have to be very quick. Where, for those of you that know, now remember, this was, this was in the 90s, okay? This is during the tenure of our second Republican president, late President Chiluba. After serving 10 years, two terms, as he approached the end of his second term, there was talk that he wanted to build something that he called the FJT Democratic Institute. And it was going to fall under the description, in part, under the description of his legacy. Because he wanted to foster this idea that, you know, African countries should, should really rally behind democracy and what it's truly defined to be, democracy. So he came up with this idea that I'm going to build an institute that touts, that glorifies, that promotes the tenets of democracy within the African context. And everybody was happy. They said, oh, really? Fred's going to do that? Frederick Chiluba is going to build an institute, a democratic institute that promotes democracy within the African context, uh, pr promotes the tenets of democracy. 
Tell me in the comments. Where? Yes, that's right. This is it. By Adam. Is this Adam? Adon. Ad I'm sorry. I'm nearsighted, so I have to squint sometimes. Acacia Park. What you know as Acacia Park. Some of you don't even know that that building, originally, it was about Chiluba who owned that building. And the idea was to build an institute. I sat in the office of S.P. Mulenga. Some of you may not know who S.P. Mulenga uh, is. But S.P. Mulenga was a big property mogul in this country. Huge, massive. You know, he's the, he's the father of, you know, the young man that owns Muevantu page, Muevantu Facebook page? That's his dad. His dad and I, his father, okay, Uyu Musonda, uh, sorry, Kasonde, Kasonde Mulenga is the owner of Muevantu Facebook page. Kasonde Mulenga's father, SP Mulenga, was a huge property mogul in, in this country. His father and my father were very good friends. I also became very close friends with uh, SP Mulenga. But SP Mulenga showed me the, the drawings, the architectural drawings of the FJT Democratic Institute in the 90s. And you know, uh, SP Mulenga served in uh, Chiluba's government. And in those days, they were very excited about this, this project, this project that uh, FJT called the FJT Insti Democratic Institute. I saw the drawings, the layer. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. But let me tell you what derailed that plan. When Chiluba was told, run for a third term. If you have plans, the idea FJT Institute, you are free there. The moment Frederick Chiluba started talking about a third term, Fiance, if you have plans, the plans for the, for the construction of that FJT Democratic Institute, Institute, died completely why because fjt frederick jacob titus Chiruva, started now focusing all of his energies on a third term when what he should have done was focus on the building can you imagine today had he not been deceived by the people around him because it's these people who surround the, the head of state who whisper to you. presidents listen to counsel don't think that these presidents come up with these ideas no it is the people surrounding them Bakateka, you have to do this if you don't do this this will happen if you don't do this so born frida i want to sitting around them but Chiruba abandoned that project to focus on the third term that's what destroyed it that's what destroyed him that building ended up being sold and 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 in my view had Vachiluba continued on that trajectory had Vachiluba uh, stepped aside had Vachiluba not attempted a third term had Vachiluba built that democratic institute it would have set in motion the culture of building legacy for former heads of state that's where it would have begun but because of selfishness, because of self-centeredness, by his own admission, he said, power, I didn't know power is so sweet. In Zambia, we say sweet. It's sweet. But in Zambia, we say sweet. I didn't know it was sweet. He came on television saying, I didn't know this seat was so sweet. The illusion of power. The illusion of power. And, and so, when, brothers and sisters, when we talk about legacy, this is what ba, ba, ba Lungu should focus on now. He should not be focusing on that every way that poor and all that craziness. His time has passed. I'll never forget, and I always say this to you, I'll never forget Balungu saying at a, a, a rally at Mulungushi Conference Center, he said, development has no destination. Every president, every administration comes in, they serve their time, they do their best to better the lives of the people. When their time is up, they move aside. They, they pave way for other leaders, new ideas, new outlooks to come in and, and, and carry the baton. 
carry the torch to the next generation. But if all you do is focus on knowing you're losing sight, you're ignoring your legacy. Don't fall into the trap that Bachiwa fell in. Balungu, focus on your legacy. Build that status of statesmanship and walk around with your head high. Yes, it's going to be a bumpy ride for you. We all know that. But you'll weather the storm when you focus on legacy. You'll, you'll break through this difficult time when you focus on legacy. But if you throw your hat back into the political race, they'll lift your immunity. You're going to live a life of hell. Let's just be frank. The last portion, as you go into the last portion of your life, because you're in the final chapters of your life, you're not, you're not, a, you're not a, a young man anymore. You know, nature takes its course. You're in your 60s. In 10 years, you'll be in your 70s. You know, you're going to be dead and gone in less than 50 years or 50 years plus, whichever it is. So it's time to focus on your legacy. Focus on that. So that we remember you and talk about you after you're dead and gone. And we say, that man left a legacy. But if all you do is listen to Rafael Hajjakaragachinda, if all you do is listen to bomb and craziness and Lusambo, you're going to lose sight of your legacy. You are. Lastly, I just want to say that I was very pleased to see the president jogging only with his security detail. You know what that does? It means he's saving money on paying kadas. Because, you know, all those chaps who go and jog with the president, you think they go there for free? You think they go there thinking, Those chaps, they expect money from their former first family. Now, can you imagine the burden, the, lay, the, 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 the load of responsibility every Saturday? Could you quit Puko Could you eat breakfast? Could you impia? They have to give those chaps money. Elio Ngaba is somebody 300. Do you know what happens to these people when they go there? Per chance, but the way I know politicians, there's no way Balungu can send those people uh, without paying them or giving them money because he's a politician. He knows. He knows the game, the way it's supposed to be played. He knows it. He's a very experienced, seasoned uh, politician. So he knows that he has to part away with this money when he... When they come jogging, when 300 people come jogging with him, he knows. Now, imagine if he decides not to pay them. Do you know what? Those are the same people who come saying, when they go without Balungu giving them anything, you know what they say? Hmm. Do you see the duplicity of the Zambian? Don't play with Zambians. <laughs> as long as buddy is Umuzulu, Japa, ah, you are friends. Don't make a My goodness. That's how those cadres talk. So I'm very pleased. My point is this I'm very pleased that the president has scaled down. The, sorry, uh, that the sixth president, uh, former President Lungu, has scaled down his jogging detail that he's only now jogging with his security. What do you think? Tell me. Tell me. Legacy. And there comes a time when each man is left alone, looking back at his spent life and asking, what will I leave behind? Yes. Well said. Thank you. Sweet and sour. Hmm. It's shameful the laws of this country fail to apply on rich thief, but can only apply on poor people. Hmm. I disagree, sir. Rather, this is a direct response to the very demeaning katumpa comments the current president made which he rather than being subliminal called out the sixth president that way that was uncalled for
Last one. They have nothing to fear. Hey, Isaac. See you, brother. They have nothing to fear. Our courts are toothless. The cases just drag on. So they're sitting pretty. That's a very interesting point. Hey, guys. Thank you for watching. God bless. Bye. All right, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.